Hickok 45 here with a 270 for the first time maybe in my life I think maybe I shot a friends but a long time ago but we have a 270 and it's in the Mossberg Patriot y'all have requested it so we're gonna combine a couple of things here I've not really tried all right well we start out since the 270 is such a flat shooting cartridge it's famous for that being a very very effective cartridge uh, just just a great round and you know especially for hunters you know where I don't hunt I don't you know have a 270 but I can appreciate it because uh, I just love a round like this that's flat shooting kind of like a 6.5 so I, I set up a pig and a ram over there at 230 yards and I'm gonna try to knock down that pig first I guess he's right in front of the red swinging plate over there across the hill all right I've got five rounds. See if I can do it in five. All right. Now, watch me miss the ram. Let me rest a second. I'm about to, I'm about to pull the trigger at the wrong time. <laughs> I just knew I was about to. All right, a little self-discipline here. All right, let's try her again. Way off. I was about I did what I was about to do the first time. Be a better footing here. Okay, take him out. All right. <laughs> okay. We'll leave the bolt open. How's that? This is pretty cool. It's a uh, well, the magazine pops out, so you've got a, a removable magazine. Holds five. Uh, kind of like the Ruger, uh, some of the Ruger, you know, rifles. Uh, I like this, though. It feels really uh, solid. So let's go down here and take some uh, closer shots with it. A little tribute to Jack O'Connor, the 270. Pretty cool. So, so uh, here we are with a hunting rifle. And it seems to me, if memory serves, we recently did a an FAQ video about why I don't hunt or that I don't hunt and that sort of thing. So, and so check that out. Uh, I, nothing is hunting, I just don't do it. Too lazy, whatever, so watch the FAQ. But I do appreciate a fine hunting rifle. I, I really do. And a cartridge that I have read about and heard about for a long time, this old 270 round, is, uh, is just a great round. It's uh, based on kind of a 30 out six case I think just kind of neck down I believe 277 and it has taken so much game uh, I think it has been around since about uh, 1925 in that area I've read a little bit I, I again I don't hunt but I've uh, I've read about Jack O'Connor famous hunter and gun writer of the what 40s 50s 60s 70s I think he died in maybe late 70s or around 80, long in there. And a friend, in fact, a friend of mine lent me one of his books recently I've read. Really interesting insights on this cartridge and all cartridges. He's hunted with everything all over the planet, and uh, including the 3030 Winchester. But he's a huge proponent of the 270. Uh, he is attributed with, uh, oh, I don't know, a lot of the reason it became successful because he hunted with it everywhere and took game that people might have thought couldn't be taken with a, a, a 270. And uh, he has taken everything from grizz, uh, lots of sheep, and then a lot of animals in Africa, I think. And, and it, I, what happens sometimes too is someone maybe doesn't say, well, I'm gonna go hunt grizzly, or I'm gonna go hunt elephants or whatever, I'm talking back in the day. And, uh, and I'm going to take a 270 or I'm going to take a 22 long rifle. It's not that as much as they're maybe hunting something else and not expecting to encounter a grizzly or a, or a big mule deer 
you know, big as my truck or something, you know, and uh, they, they're legal to take it at the time or whatever. And so they might have had a larger firearm if they were hunting, uh, you know, grizz, <laughs> but they use it and it does the job, okay? Or they defend themselves against the grid, whatever. So anyway, it has proven itself over and over and over. So if you don't know anything about Jack O'Connor and you like to hunt, wow. And if you have a 270 and you don't know the name Jack O'Connor, I don't even hunt and I've known the name Jack O'Connor for a long time. So look up some of his books and do some reading. Uh, this is a fascinating uh, uh, fellow and a fascinating cartridge. Now he was a huge fan of the Model 70 uh, also. And from my reading about this Mossberg Patriot, back to the topic of the firearm, uh, Mossberg was really trying to just build a traditional rifle with this. I think this was introduced in about 2015, maybe at SHOT Show. Uh, a firearm, you know, like a Winchester that just had the, that same feel, the traditional feel, traditional bolt. It's, uh, you know, it's two lugs on it. It's got a push uh, ejector, comes out of the bolt face. Uh, nothing crazy un unusual or anything just a nice pull this out the bolt it's uh it's just a nice gun fluted as you can see there's your ejector and your two lugs two locking lugs and they just built kind of a traditional hunting rifle that uh, is pretty popular apparently i have had so many requests to get one of these and i've been uh, negligent sorry about that uh, it really does feel good to me. And you know, I have a 270, as you, or not a 270, a, a Model 70, as you know, that pre-war 70 that feels so good. When you bring that thing up, it just fits like a dream. I have to say, this does feel a lot like a Model 70. So they took a lot of the specifications, the things I read that, that Jack O'Connor likes in a rifle, or that he liked in a rifle, and uh, a lot of that was kind of, I guess, the Model 70 in a lot of ways. And, but anyway, they, they, that's what they tried to duplicate from what I had read. And it, it's great. Now, I've got an extender on it, but it just feels good. It really does. If you've never felt one of these, if you're looking for a, uh, a hunting rifle like this, and it comes in all the, the standard chamberings, you know, for uh, you know, hunting rounds, especially 30-06, 308, uh, gosh, uh, all the way up to, I think it, it's chambered in uh, like 338 Wind Mag and even 375 Ruger. So apparently it's built well. And uh, it's something to look at because the rifle itself, I think, I think you can get it for around 400 bucks, maybe a little more. This with the scope, I think is like five and a half or something like that. Don't quote me on that, but it's, it's under six, I think, with all that. So it just depends on where you get it. Now this scope is nothing fancy. You know, it's a dead ringer, right? Uh, <laughs> three to nine, but that's okay. That's one reason I went ahead and got this one from Buds. The scope came with it and everything. So this rig, it, it comes as you see it. And it is, again, since I'm not a hunter, I don't have a lot of different hunting scopes and mounts and all that. And so I've got to, okay, let's mount a scope. What scope do we want to put on it? What kind of mounts do I need to get? So. Uh, you know, since it's going back for e-gunner, I'm not going to have it that long. It's just nice to have a scope that works. You might prefer a better scope. I don't know. That they would get the job done though. For so for that kind of money, you've got a total rig that, that feels good and seems to shoot well. Okay, and then you could upgrade the scope later. I mean, again, I'm not trying to sell it to you, but it seems like something that makes sense to me. It seems logical, you know, because everybody is. Uh, you know, trying to get the most for their buck. And that's one thing that we hear a lot. People want us to, to look at firearms that aren't, aren't so expensive occasionally, some of the bargain you know, firearms. And th this seems to be one of them, a really quality firearm for the money, uh, seems to me. But uh, you may have a different opinion if you have one or have had trouble with it, share. Especially if you're not from the competition. <laughs> so, I mean, you never know. You always have to take with a grain of salt anything anybody says, right? Even me. With a big grain of salt. Let's shoot the thing a little bit here. Quit yakking. It's pretty neat. Oop. What was that about? Didn't have it clipped in there, did I? There we go. Heard that one click. All right. So, now we're in different range territory. Let's take a couple of easy shots. I'll crank this back a little bit. I had that on five power. Put it on about four and take out a, uh, a pot right there, maybe. Safety's off. I don't know, uh, 
I don't know if I really want this rifle or not because when you put the the magazine in, it, it you've got to work the bolt to get around in the chamber. That seems kind of lame, doesn't it? Just kidding. <laughs> Smoke a little pot. <laughs> Look at that squirrel over there He's running away. <laughs> There he goes. <laughs> He's saying, don't shoot, don't shoot. Let's go over there and take out that two liter by the gong. Oh man, kind of small. All right. <laughs> and let's hit a red plate over there on the left. Ah, uh, you notice how hard that hits. Let's try the. Uh, Let's try the smallest red plate. All right. Oh, swings it pretty well. Yeah, boy. 270 is no slouch. It's a nice round. It uh, really is. Uh, the, uh, I think the bullet that uh, uh, Jack O'Connor liked was the 130 grain, like, which is what these are. And I believe they're trucking around 3,000 feet per second. Uh, yeah, 3,050 at the muzzle. And and it's a, I mean, that's pretty fast. That's what makes a, a, a 5.56 AR so loud. You know, you're, you're talking about a muzzle velocity of around 3,000 feet per second or over. And that's where you get that incredible velocity and, and the noise. Well, here you got a 130 grain bullet instead of a 55 grain bullet going that fast. So it's definitely no slouch. It, uh, just, just a nice cartridge. It'll get the job done. Uh, another friend of mine who hunts a lot and fishes, he spends his entire life hunting and fishing. Now <laughs> he's retired. In fact, I know he has a, I think it's a Ruger. I'm not sure which gun it is actually, but it's a, I, and if I've ever shot a 270, that's probably the one I fired maybe once or twice somewhere back through the years, but, uh, or right here perhaps with it. Uh, Cause he had it out here a time or two, I think siding it in but it's a 270 that's what he hunts with uh when he's using a regular rifle not a muzzle loader so uh, it's just a really really popular round especially people who really know firearms you know uh some people who are just brand new to it they oh well what's a 270 i gotta have a 30 odd six well nothing wrong with a 30 odd six either but uh but boy this thing will do it Oh man, we've got a target rich environment here. Let's put a couple on this paper first. Let's see if I hold up about right. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Smoke's more pop. <laughs> Let's smoke a two liter. There's another orange one there. Oh, I hit that plate over there behind it. Hope it didn't damage it. So five shots. Of course, you could get a 30 round mag for it, maybe. Right? I doubt that. So uh, what else about it? Uh, you know, it's got a what's that? What do they call that trigger? Lightning bolt action trigger or something like that. And it's uh, supposed to be like a two to seven you know, pounds, I think. Uh, it comes at about two or three pounds. It's a nice trigger. Uh, people rave about the trigger and I have no complaints it's really the reason like I was able to hit over there 230 yards even though they're not you know I'm not shooting popsicle sticks shooting a, a couple larger animals but still 230 yards and standing and that's harder to do than you would think if you don't have a good trigger and uh, well if you just don't have a good trigger because uh, you know even though the scope tells you exactly where you're holding whether or not you're going to hit as I've gone through this before, you folks that have never really shot much, youngsters or whoever, uh, a scope is uh, can really help a great deal, particularly if you're resting on something. Like I could bench rest this thing right here and put it on something, get locked in, and I know whether I'm going to hit or not. It's just a matter of whether or not the scope's on. If I close this up, I could put this on a turkey. I could put it even on that small red plate and lock in on it. And I could easily bet you $500 I'm going to hit it, right? I wouldn't be afraid to because I know it's locked in. The sight is on. I'll hit it. But now if I pick it up, you know, like this and shoot, I'm not going to bet you $500 I'm going to hit it. Okay? <laughs> it's just another proposition, okay? Let's load up some more. 
So anyway, you got a really nice trigger. Uh, and these things have a reputation for being accurate. I've read several reviews on them. Uh, they, uh, they just review well. I'm sure some people have had some negative experiences with them, as with anything. If you have, share it. Like I say, as long as you're not from the competition. But, uh, yeah, tell us what you think of it. If you've ever you're fired one, they come in a composite stock and, you know, different variations. Uh, this is a 22-inch barrel. That, uh, that barrel fluted is kind of nice, isn't it? Kind of a, a matte finish. So it's a nice looking rifle. For that kind of money to get a walnut stock, uh, I, I'm impressed so far, I have to say. I, I think I like this better. Uh, you know, it, the cool thing is now, a lot of people make this, this I guess, category of rifle. It's Ruger, Savage, uh, you know, Mossberg, uh, you, know, you, you could name them. Uh, and I have to say, this is one of my favorites. Uh, I, I, I like this better than the Ruger uh, American, I think. Uh, you know, it just feels beefier. It, it fills my hand, and it just feels more like a Model 70, like I said. But you might prefer the feel of the Ruger. They're all accurate, and they're all good rifles. So it's, it's a great time uh, to be able to, to go buy a really accurate hunting rifle without dumping a couple thousand dollars in it. Unless you want to do that, of course. And most people would probably put a better scope on it. You know, they'd upgrade the scope, be my guess. We still have some targets here. Yeah, target rich environment, huh? Let me see if I can avoid shooting steel here. Ooh. Nice round. <laughs> There's one right there. Ooh. Let's finish off this pot. <laughs> Maybe I'll just leave him like that. Wow. A nice round. Uh, the 270 doesn't kick as much as a 30 out 6 and uh, it's it's kind of like midway I guess in a way between like a 30 out 6 you know, 6.5 you know uh, like a Creedmoor or a, a Swedish you know round Mauser round uh, which they don't kick at all and this has a little bit of punch to it on your shoulder but but not much uh, and and to be so effective it's pretty nice it's fun to shoot I like the magazine, I don't know if you can tell anything, but it seems uh, some other low-end uh, bolt guns like this, the magazine seems so cheap, but this one feels a little bit better. I promise I don't get uh, a percentage of uh, <laughs> sales from, uh, who is this? Mossberg, yeah, Mossberg. <laughs> I really am remiss in uh, taking so long to get around to this, because I've had this on the to-do list for quite a while. I didn't realize it was uh, such a nice rifle really didn't. I see why folks want to see it. It has a pretty good reputation. It'll even uh, take out a bowling pin. Let's knock one of those off there. Oh, man, man. Let's go back over there and hit those red plates on the right. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, target stand. Try the other one. We've got a cinder block there. Let's hit it. <laughs> and that was a whole cinder block. It, uh, I mean, it's got some punch to it. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I, I, I don't know, man. I'm overreacting. The fact that I've got big hands and everything, and you know, when I put my extender on it, it just feels. It doesn't feel cheap at all. Uh, and I know $400, $500 is not cheap, right? But boy, you know, if you've looked at rifles, they can be really expensive. But uh, this is kind of a lower end, but man, it just feels, it feels good. It feels beefy, the right weight. And uh, this is one I would uh, consider for sure if I was a hunter. Uh, negatives, gosh, I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, it's not a, it's not exactly a Mauser action. How's that for a negative? Okay, <laughs> it's hard to beat the uh, the Mauser action, but you know it's it gets the job done. I'm sure. Good trigger, feels good. Uh, it's uh, accurate from all accounts. I'll shoot it one more time. Can I? You shoot some of this good 
Federal Ammo. Uh, yeah, Fusion, 130 grain. There's always an advantage to a, a flat shooting rifle, and that's one of the reasons I'm, I'm sure Jack O'Connor liked it. it. It was very effective round, and then plus it, uh, you know, uh, it, it was lighter recoiling and flatter shooting. He used to hunt a lot of sheep, you know, rams and you know things and uh, and everything. But uh, but having a flatter shooting, the more the flatter a rifle shoots, as you can imagine, the easier it would be to adjust between ranges. That's one of the big deals in it, figuring out how far away something is. There might be a sheep, whatever you're hunting, a wild hog or something, at, at 75 yards, and you're down, and he moves, and he's he's at 100 yards, and he's at 150 before you get a shot at him or whatever it is. Uh, you're not having to calculate the uh, the holdover and all that as much, changing in the point of, uh, of aim, because it's uh, flat shooting. Those of you who shot a uh, 223, 556, for example, know what I'm talking about. If you're shooting at you know, like 50 yards or 150 yards, there's just not much difference either. That thing's just pretty flat shooting. It's so fast. All right. Let's finish off that cinder block over there. No light trigger. I didn't mean to fire that quick. I guess I won't hit the animals uh, this close. It, it'll do a little damage to them. Try that red plate again, though. Nice. And we'll put one more on it. Yeah, we'll just hit the red plate. I was thinking about the gong. Even though it's AR-500, something is really hot trucking fast. It does some damage to it, uh, particularly because it is so big and heavy. It doesn't give much. Something that gives, you know, doesn't do as much damage to it. But pretty neat. Uh, I can't think of any other uh, wild tales about it that I haven't told you. Uh, a nice combination because it's hard to beat a 270. Uh, it just really is. And uh, that round has been around for a long time. Like I say, about 1925, I think. And I was reading that the uh, one reason it took it a little while to take off was probably the bullet technology wasn't as advanced at that time and these really fast bullets for the time uh, you know didn't hold together as well maybe but it gradually picked up steam and has become a, an extremely uh, popular hunting round and uh, it's hard to beat if you've never considered it if you're looking to get your first hunting rifle and you're going to deer hunt or any kind of large larger game like that it, it'd be one you'd want to probably think about study about lots of good ones lots of good ones lots of good choices uh most of them work fine most of it's the the shooter the hunter or whatever uh but uh but it would be a viable choice be a good choice worthy of consideration put it that way and uh, i would have to say this rifle is worthy of consideration it's pretty nice uh, pretty nice for the money and uh, maybe for any money you know, it's pretty good Good rifle. The Mossberg Patriot comes in different variations and uh, different stocks. And uh, just check their website for pricing and all that. Uh, but again, it's it's available. You can find it just about anywhere, I think. And uh, I uh, I forget the exact price with this scope combination. I'm thinking it was like five something. I may be wrong on that, but but uh, that tells you the scope is not exactly you know $800 Leupold, right? Uh, but it is a scope that you know, has a pretty clear picture. You know, if you get the job done, you can always upgrade it. It's got two position safety and uh, just safer off. You know. So, anyway, Mossberg Patriot. Glad to get a chance to finally try it out. And uh, pretty nice rifle, seems to me. Tell us what you think about it. Maybe you have one. Life is good. doing just here uh, practicing a little guitar as you can tell I need to get better um, just on the range hanging out but I wanted to let you guys know while I'm here since you guys just stumbled in on my practice session 
about our friends over at SDI. You can check them out at sdi.edu. That's the Sonoran Desert Institute. They're a fully accredited online distance learning program where you can be certified in gunsmithing or you can get an associate's degree in firearms technology. That's sdi.edu. Also, don't forget about our friends over at vaultechsafe.com. You've seen their safes, the Vaultech on our uh, shooting table. So don't forget to check them out if you get a chance. And also all of our other uh, social media entities. Uh, we are on Patreon now, so you can uh, find us on Patreon. There'll be links in the description. This is Hickok45 on Patreon. We are on Facebook, of course, Hickok45 on Facebook. Um, you can also find Hickok45 on Instagram, the real Hickok45 at Instagram, Hickok45 on Twitter, uh, full30.com, and then I have some social media stuff, uh, John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram, um, John Hickok on Facebook, and there's also a Hickok45 and Son Facebook, and the Hickok45 and Son YouTube channel, of course. And I guess that's all I can think of for now. I believe that's all of our different social media things. So I guess I'll get back to my practice. As you can tell, I need to get a lot better. But I think I'm improving just a little bit. I don't know. We'll see.